Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar titled Championing the Agenda for Sustainable Development Youth for SDGs. This webinar is being held as part of our student and youth engagement activities and is being held in collaboration with Isaac. To give you a brief introduction about the Pearl Initiative for those of you that aren't familiar with us, the Pearl Initiative is the region's leading non-profit business-led organisation commissioned to promote a corporate culture of transparency and accountability across, as a key driver of competitiveness across the Gulf region's private sector. In light of the recent public health pandemic, our knowledge sharing events, including our seminars, workshops, roundtables, and student engagement events, have moved to virtual webcasts for the time being. Um, and you can find more about find out more information about those on our website or on our YouTube channel. As I mentioned, we are collaborating with Isaac on this webinar. Um, to give you a quick introduction to Isaac, they are an international non-governmental, non-political, not-for-profit, and independent organization. Founded in 1948, run by you. Isaac aims to connect to young people all around the world by providing a platform for them to explore and develop their leadership potential and to, have a, and to have a positive impact on society. As I mentioned, today's webinar is about the championing the agenda for sustainable development for youth for SDGs. We are in an era of unprecedented challenges and opportunities, from threats posed by climate change to the societal shifts caused by emerging technologies, the pace of change is truly staggering and overwhelming. Achieving the global goals for or sustainable development goals by 2030, as outlined by the UN, has never been more important. As we embark on the 10-year countdown, the race to zero is clearly underway and the youth have an undeniably important role to play. The SDGs are the ultimate blueprint to achieving a sustainable future for all and achieving the 2030 targets will no doubt have a positive impact on all of our lives, particularly that of the youth of today, and we all stand to benefit considerably as the world becomes more equitable for all. However, as the future generation, the responsibility towards the SDGs is not only to support and advocate for them, but also to integrate them within daily lives. The world today is the largest generation of young people in history, with 1.8 billion young people aged 10 to 24, accounting for nearly 24% of the global population. In the Arab world alone, young people represent the fastest growing demographic, with over 60% of the population under the age of 30. Numerous global challenges to development are especially salient for children and youth. Significant progress was achieved over the last few decades in terms of poverty, human rights and development. However, deep challenges remain as the pursuit of the Millennium, Goal, Millennium Development Goals led to uneven progress. Many young people across the globe are still subject to various forms of discrimination, suffering high levels of poverty and experiencing limited access to basic health care or quality education, which has a major negative impact on job opportunities as a consequence. Building on the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals and the learnings from their shortfalls, the development of the 2030 agenda, including the participation from private institutions, civil societies, organization, and most importantly, youth. As a major contributor to the workforce and society in the future, young people play a key role in shaping and developing the 2030 agenda. Drawing on the inputs and experiences of young people from around the world is a necessary process to ensure that needs, rights, and priorities of young citizens of the world are addressed and integrated with 17 sustainable development goals and 169 targets. The youth have been essential in the development of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and will continue to be involved in the frameworks and process that support its implementation. The active engagement of youth in sustainable development efforts is key to achieving sustainable, inclusive, and developed societies by 2030. Sharing her knowledge and experience today, our guest, speak, our guest speaker, Samana Singh, will discuss how the youth will experience the outcomes of SDGs and will also be key actors and influencers towards their successful implementation and achievement. Thus, it is crucial to build a workforce that continues to work towards fulfilling the 2030 Agenda for Sustainability. Today's session will also discover the role of the youth in effectively implementing the SDGs framework for their future career, careers and sustainable society. Introducing our speaker for today, Samana Singh is the Chief Sustainability and Impact Officer of Coco Vida, listed on Singapore's social enterprise RAISE platform. She has been building her youth and sustainability focused networking and digital program platform, Sustainable Relationship Partners, as an extension of Coco Vida to widen the impact across all sectors of the society with multi stakeholder partnerships. Samana was accepted as a United Nations Global Compact Youth Ambassador in the UAE and has been privileged to be a part of Mostar's Future Sustainability Leaders Program to complement her academic studies. She's represented the youth delegation in, in Yekaterinburg at GMIS conference, 
along with the UAE, UAE Ministry of Energy and Industry in Madrid at the COP25 the United Nations Climate Change Conference with the UAE Ministry of Climate Change and Environment. Smyrna is a passionate sustainability advocate and she is actively involved in action in the SDGs with a strong belief that the youth will make a difference and they will not stop until they are heard. Thank you, Smyrna. We really appreciate your um, contribution and um, you know, supporting us on such a topic close to your heart. As with all our webinar, web, web, webinars, we do like them to be as interactive as possible. So we do invite you to ask questions you may have at, pertaining to the topic during the session using the platform's Q&A tool, which you'll see on your right. And Smyrna will take the last 15 minutes of the session to answer them for you. I will now hand over to Smyrna, um, who will be leading today's session. Thank you, Smyrna. Thank you so much, Yasmin, you know, for once again, the opportunity, Pearl Initiative and Isaac, uh, very, very grateful, um, you know, and looking forward uh, to going over this presentation. Um, so thank you so much again for the very amazing introduction. Um, apologies, yeah. Um, as Yasmin mentioned, I'm an SDGs advocate, um, have been, you know, focusing mainly on advocating them for the last couple of years uh, while studying. Uh, also, as she said, I'm the Chief Sustainability and Impact Officer um, for Coca Veda and really looking forward uh, to discussing these important topics um, with you. So without further ado, if I could please make this session very interactive. Um, I personally don't like sessions that are uh, not. So if I could ask all the attendees um, to please share if any of you have actually studied sustainability during your university time, you can answer on the questions or the chat bar. Um, so how many of you have actually studied sustainability um, in your undergraduate or master's degree? Okay, so there are quite a lot of people um, who have studied it. And, and how many of you, um, you know, think that sustainability is an important um, topic that should be discussed moving forward? Okay, great. So through my discussion, um, more or less, I'm going to be discussing a little bit on the SDGs, understanding the importance of it, um, impact of it on young people, examining some of the youth targets, um, how youth can actually take steps towards achieving the sustainable development goals and some implementation, and finally, how we can prepare ourselves for the future and beyond. Um, so the question of the day, uh, which sustainability target is of priority to you? And I think you can answer this on the chat because um, this perhaps can be answered by the hand button. So I'll just repeat the question one more time. Um, which of the sustainability goals or which of the sustainability targets do you think is of importance um, to youth today? Um, it could be it could be anything. It, it depends on what you think is important and I'm not gonna influence the discussion um, because I would like to address this in the next couple of slides. So I'll just wait for a minute on all of your um, answers. Okay, so someone said climate change, someone said education, um, someone uh, also said economic growth. Um, so is there any finance? Okay, very interesting. Foot, footprint, okay, great. Um, so we have quite a lot of interesting and very varied answers, uh, which I actually was not expecting. So thank you so much for answering that. A little bit about the SDGs and Yasmin gave a fantastic overview already on them. Um, so, you know, the world leaders already decided to choose the 17 SDGs um, to create a more sustainable world moving forward. Um, and these global goals, as she said, achieve a, ver a varied um, different types of targets, all the way from poverty, good health and well-being, quality education, of course, the environmental aspects of climate change as well. Um, and each of us have to make a difference in order to make sure that we're not leaving anyone behind. And I think that's the overall goals. 
uh, when the Millennium Development Goals as well was launched, uh, you know, the targets were still very ambitious as the SDGs are. Um, but I think what was what was neglected in the MDGs was businesses. Quite a lot of the time, a lot of us were unable to contribute because we didn't understand what the targets meant in a business context. And youth was also neglected um, and small uh, minor groups as well with women, underprivileged. Um, and so it's great that, you know, uh, the SDGs are giving us all a holistic understanding. I think SDGs are also very important for the youth because now we are the ones who are going to be driving this agenda. I don't know how many of you have already heard um, that, oh, the youth are here to clean up all the mess um, that has been created uh, by, you know, all the people uh, in the past and by the other generations. Um, so over the next 15 years, yes, there's going to be a lot of challenges. Um, and even though we have to achieve these targets in the next 10 years, realistically, I personally don't think we're going to be able to achieve the 2030 goals. Uh, but we have to raise awareness on this. And a lot of us really don't understand uh, all the SDGs. And so linking back to the question that I initially asked, no one actually mentioned that poverty is one of the main goals. And really, that is actually the first goal that we have to achieve. But a lot of you have mentioned decent work and economic growth, because realistically, because of COVID-19, all of us now have to focus on this main goal to acquire jobs and to be able to sustain. The first five goals of the SDGs really focus on people. Um, so when individuals say that, you know, uh, sustainability is only about the environment, that's really not the case at all. The importance of sustainability amongst youth is extremely, extremely important um, today. And I'll just lead uh, some discussion points and I'm happy to answer any questions towards the end and feel free to constantly ask me questions in the chat bar as well. So firstly, we're living in a very difficult era. A lot of us have very limited job security today and I'll share some statistics in the next couple of slides. Uh, everyone knows that we're facing a planet crisis and actually because of COVID-19, uh, you know, the overall planet has definitely improved, uh, just as an example, because of this period, um, you know, individuals are now focusing on rebuilding the coral reef uh, and trying to protect it, which perhaps was not done in the past because of lack of tourism, carbon footprint has also decreased. Um, so there is great opportunities because of COVID-19. But the question is, after COVID-19, what is going to happen to the planet? Everyone will have to resume their businesses one more time. And so really, uh, if anything, the planet crisis should only become worse because we have to rebuild ourselves. As a society, uh, all of us are now more conscious. Uh, you know, we're very, very aware of uh, what's going on. We're more conscious about the products that we buy. Um, but at the same time, some big brands are still, you know, contributing to greenwashing. And I'll give you an example in the next couple of slides as well. Uh, we're very lucky as well to be living in the UAE. Uh, with the leadership of the country and for those who are from around the globe as well. Um, I'm sure that your leaders from your uh, relevant countries are now contributing to the sustainable development goals. Um, usually they create a framework, but for some reason this framework is not being passed down in our education syllabus and it's not being shared with us to discuss in our schools as well. As youth, we now have the power of influence to make a difference uh, all the way from social media, interacting with people, networking. We have such a wide role to play, and I think we have the opportunity to do so um, as well. So some statistics that I want to ask, um, and please let me know if any of you know this. Um, around 621 young, uh, young people between the ages of 15 to 24 are now not in education, employment or training. So how many of you actually knew that? Like I said, I want to keep it interactive. So um, feel free to answer on the questions or the poll. Um, so how many of you um, actually knew this statistic? Samantha, you had no idea. Thank you so much for sharing the Ahmed as well. Um, all right, so these are two people who, who shared their thoughts. Um, and for everyone else, uh, you know, please also, uh, Amna, Shuk, thank you so much for, for saying that. My second question, of course, moving forward is that 24% of the workforce is now made up of us Gen Z. Um, how many of you knew that? I think Yasmin mentioned it. 
um, in the beginning of the session. Okay, so Harry, you knew this statistic. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. Um, okay, Samantha was aware as well. So now moving forward to the next uh, point, approximately 90% of the youth now live below uh, poverty. And this is between 10 to, 14, 10 to 24 years old, where 1.8 billion people are now in LEDCs. So how many of you were aware of that? That makes up a large population. Okay, so a lot of you were not aware of that. All right, and then finally, more than a third of the SDG targets are now related to including the youth with relation to their participation, their well being, and of course, their empowerment. So, how many of you knew that a third of the targets included us? All right, so Sakshi, you were aware of this fact. Thank you so much. Ahmed, you didn't know this. Um, okay, so there's some mixed answers um, overall. So thank you so much to everyone who, who's shared. And yes, I agree um, with Zara. These are very shocking statistics. Uh, moving on to my next slide, where I would like to touch on examining the youth-related targets and objectives. So what is the impact of COVID-19 on the youth? Uh, before the crisis, as you know, more than 267 million people were already not in employment, education, or training. And this included almost 68 million people of unemployed young people. Then moving on, more than one in six people have already stopped working because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and actually, if you look at statistics, individuals have cut their hours by 23%. Uh, this is according to the latest international labor, labor organization data. Um, so imagine if you're cutting down your, you know, for those who are in organizations right now by 23%, your pay must have really, really cut down and that's shocking. Half of the students are already likely to delay their studies at the moment because they're unable to afford it. And only 10% are, are unable to complete it at all. So that 10% can't even you know, focus on their education. So how are we gonna achieve SDG four? Many jobs are already going to be disappearing um, and this will leave so many young people behind. Um, and a lot of them are actually now in insecure jobs with lower paid working conditions because they have to get employment to support their families. Um, and then from another statistic point of view, um, increasing demand for digital skills. So are we actually learning these skills in our education? Um, you know, these are skills that are now a prerequisite, uh, but still, we're still learning only Excel, maybe Microsoft Word. And is this really preparing us for COVID-19 and the future? I mean, a lot of us now have to move on to mobile applications, web, um, AI and machine learning. I personally don't remember learning any of this in school. And finally, well-being has been significantly affected because of COVID-19, uh, where a lot of us have anxiety or depression because of the pandemic. Um, and this is only going to get worse because we really don't know how um, you know, the overall situation is going. Um, Zara, some of the digital skills that I would recommend to youth, um, to be honest, I would really recommend doing an overall course. Um, some of the skills that really I think are now trending is, of course, doing one on machine learning, just to understand the overall basics, uh, because moving forward, there is going to be data, for example, that will now um, equip you uh, to acquiring certain trends. So just as an example, I'm, I'm just going to give a very specific example. I'm working with Coco Veda, uh, which focuses on products. Um, and, you know, some of the new things that perhaps is going to be trending in the next couple of years with machine learning and predicting data is getting a list of questions on your website or mobile application where individuals actually have to answer based on their skin type, their preference, their age, gender. Um, and on its own, the machine automatically detects and decides which products would be suitable for you. This is a real life example. And I think that's something that we are now working towards, but really digital tech is so, so important. Um, this is, I think, something that should be focused on moving forward. Um, even skills like Photoshop, simple web development are skills that need to be learned. And I'm not sure how many of these you've already acquired, 
uh, but this is my personal um, opinion on the digital skills. Even understanding basics is very, very important. Um, another thing, Zara, just to answer your question. Um, nowadays, a lot of IT individuals in this space are making quite good money because they're in high demand. Uh, but if you don't understand uh, the digital skills that you need and you don't give the guidance, um, then there is a possibility uh, that they might you know, fool you and therefore you have to pay an additional cost just because you don't understand. Um, so it's very important to equip yourself from a business point of view as well. And I hope, I hope that answers your question. Uh, moving on to the next slide where I'm gonna speak a little bit on women, uh, just because I am a woman myself and I think we're in a very vulnerable uh, situation moving forward. When crisis strikes, women and youth, for some reason, are automatically hit harder because of the economic impacts. So let's talk a little bit on the statistics. Uh, by the end of March, and we're talking March now, it's already September, about 89% of the world's student population was out of schools or university because of the COVID-19 closure, forcing many of us, uh, especially the younger, uh, you know, uh, population to now focus on moving to technology driven webinars so i think this is something that everyone's now uh, adopting we're all doing home school or learning and i think in some countries this is still the case uh, but let's look at it from an african uh, perspective uh, for example if you're situated in africa with no connection no wi-fi how exactly are you expected to learn some of these youth and women actually go to school to get nutritional meals because perhaps they can't afford it in their homes. And I think that's very, very important. We're very lucky and blessed to be living here where a lot of us actually can get, you know, education. We're all starting to go back to schools. Uh, but, you know, in some countries, it's not the case. Out of 267 million young people, 181 million people are actually women. And out of these women, um, a lot of us are unable you know, to go to school, unable to acquire employment or training. Um, and that's a very, very important statistic. Apologies for the screen. Uh, also, a lot of the women now are now prone to child marriages, violence, uh, elevating economic burdens and staying home. So they let the men, for example, perhaps go to schools um and not the women um and that's very very upsetting so really inequalities have only only increased as you can see from an informal employment section 63 percent of the men are still employed and whilst 58 percent of the women are not and this is only in the informal section i would now like to you know share some more information with you so really in a nutshell my question really is, are the 20 youth targets enough today? Um, there are some you know, youth targets that have been implemented uh, by the UN, I think across uh, a couple of the SDGs. But the question is, is this really enough? I think from a government perspective, there is a lot that needs to be done. Uh, I had the opportunity to attend the COP25 in December, um, where we focused on climate change mainly um, and discussed these solutions about reducing the planet for achieving the 1.5 degrees Celsius uh, and making sure that it's below that. Um, and to be honest, I attended some of the negotiations um, where individuals were starting to you know, build contracts and they focused on punctuation, they focused on vocabulary, uh, where the full stop should even go and all these long policies. Um, but really the SDGs, are they actually telling us how we should achieve it? So let's speak about good health and well-being. One of the targets that has been, sh that has been set is by 2030, ensure universal access to sexual and reproductive health services, including for family planning, information and education, and integration of reproductive health into national strategies and programs. Has it told you anywhere how you're going to achieve this? Nope. Moving on to perhaps uh, goal number for SDG 4, quality education. By 2030, ensure all girls and boys complete free, equitable and quality primary and secondary education, relevant learning and effective outcomes should be understood. Again, has it told us how we're going to achieve this? So personally, I completely disagree with having these 20 youth targets across the SDGs, even though I'm a very strong advocate of the sustainable development goals nowhere has it told us um, that you know this is this is the way uh, we have to achieve it and so that's very very disappointing 
Um, so there are quite a lot of these targets and they're available on the UN um, you know, website. And so I'm not really going to go into the depth of it because I personally don't disagree with it. I don't agree with it, sorry. Uh, but overall, we need to now focus on quality education and decent work for the youth uh, to focus on sustainable development goals. So I would now like to you know, explain to you some of the steps that we can take to contribute to the SDGs and make it a little bit more practical. So up till now, I spent all the time discussing you know, all the knowledge that individuals have. So let's quickly ask a question. Why do you want to contribute to sustainability? And have you actually already identified your passion and purpose? So I'll give you guys a minute to answer this question um, and then we can discuss it as well. So why do you want to commit to sustainability? Why do you want to achieve the goals? What do you think you can contribute to the SDGs or what perspectives can you bring? Um, I would love to hear. Um, so Anud, thank you so much. Um, you shared that I want to contribute to sustainability to save our planet and create better living for humans all around. Thank you so much, Anud. And if I you know, lead up to a follow-up question, have you already identified what you're going to be doing in your future career? to achieve saving the planet and creating a better life for humans around the world? Samantha, you recently began your zero waste journey and you wanna achieve these goals to improve the world around you. Uh, your future kids and next generations will have great um, that's fantastic. Could you explain, and similar to the question that has been answered uh, to Anud, how um, you know is your zero waste journey now transforming to your career path? Um, what are the steps and initiatives you're taking? Are you contributing to employment? Uh, you know, could you just tell me a little bit about your journey as well? Um, Sarah, there's a lot of damage, and you have a passion to solve it. Thank you so much for speaking about the passion that you have. Um, it is humanity goal and we must achieve it, Shuk. Thank you so much for, for um, elaborating on that. I would now like to give you a little bit of practical experience on some of the steps that I've taken um, to contribute to the SDGs. Um, there is no really right or wrong answer um, in these steps. I actually started university uh, about four years ago with zero idea what I'm gonna do in life. Uh, I took a international hospitality degree uh, where we focused mainly on international business and hoped that everything would you know, fall into place. After my first year, uh, we had to do a compulsory six months internship in a five-star hotel chain. Um, and I got into the operations and within two weeks, I kid you not, I told you this is not for me, um, I'm leaving. Uh, and so I came all the way back from Singapore, back to Dubai, hoping that I would get some idea on what I should do moving forward. So some of the initiatives that I've, I've taken, um, I actually started building Coco Veda, aligning it to the sustainable development goals, understanding what the SDGs are, and I had no one guiding me through, through this process, a lot of which I learned through research um, and you know, watching YouTube videos, and acquiring knowledge on it. So actually anybody can understand the SDGs because they're such basic goals. Um, you know, no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, and quality education. These are uh, you know, very basic goals um, to achieve a better place in the world today. What I had the opportunity to also become was the Global Compact Youth Ambassador um, as well. And I did force myself to participate in any extracurricular activities as possible. Um, since Isaac is also organizing this program, a lot of us are now you know, uh, also part of their initiatives um, and they're doing some great work and actually leading you to employment. Um, at the same time, I wanted to give back to my generation because I was in the position where I realized a lot of us don't know what we wanna do. Um, and so I started this networking platform under Coca Veda called the Sustainable Relationship Partners, where every week uh, we used to gather 50 to 60 people. Uh, and I used to get guest speakers uh, in the UAE who were very, very established all the way from Expo 2020 um, as well. And you know some other uh, organizations as well, all the way from SMEs to large organizations, to be honest, uh, where they explained to us a little bit on how we can achieve sustainability. 
And like I said, I had zero ideas. I just used to listen to what they would say. Um, and so towards the end now, in the recent uh, webinar sessions that we've now conducted, uh, we also give internships and employment opportunities to the youth uh, because we recognize that a lot of us don't know what we want to do. So my real question for all of you is, how many of you actually learned about the SDGs in your course or syllabus? Um, and if you did, um, then you know, uh, if you didn't, sorry, then did you go to your teachers and perhaps share with them that this is something that's very important? Could you embed this within our course? Um, and how many of you today are always posting about food, uh, about the places that you're visiting, um, and you know, uh, with your friends? But how many who have you? How many of you have actually created content on sustainability? Um, this for me was actually uh, a very life-changing moment. I personally don't think I'm a leader in any way. Uh, but I do write a lot of posts on sustainability and give my perspective to showcase that the youth voice is very valuable. And if you haven't done this yet, start realigning your social media feeds to create content, use the relevant hashtags to also get known, because this will then lead you to other opportunities in the future. Even creating videos, um, this really helps you on a whole. And how many of you have actually networked with like-minded professionals in the field? If you don't, network you will actually never get opportunities so just as an example um you know i uh, actually became a sustainability consultant for a five-star hotel chain um, in the uae and i got this opportunity by doing my undergraduate thesis um you know because of the great work that i was doing and i actually networked and that's how i got opportunities even you know on a, on a whole so it's very important that all of you start networking with like-minded professionals um, and what webinars do you think have actually benefited you? Today, individuals are just speaking, um, you know, oh yeah, we can achieve this, um, SDGs, um, and that's it. But no one's talking about actions. So please choose webinars that are about actions. And last but not least, uh, in an organization, please, please, please try to get as much SMEs experience as possible. Work with startups because they are more flexible and they teach you so many things. Um, so if you work with startups, you'll be able to, you know, gear your way through your org through the organization. You'll be able to work on different projects. Um, large organizations may give you some opportunities, but you're very fixed in the job contract and the role. Um, so, you know, even if it's unpaid, uh, I know it's tough times at the moment, but try to take on as many projects as possible. So I have a couple of questions as well um, and a lot of engagement. So thank you so much to all of you. Um, I am just going to try to maximize the screen. So just give me one second uh, so we can discuss. Um, so thank you so much to um, Shuk for sharing a little bit on the opportunities um, and that that's very important for networking. Thank you so much for speaking about that. Um, with regard to Lakshmi, thank you so much, uh, you know, for sharing a little bit on the courses that you've done on environmental science um, and, you know, the fact that you learned from your seniors. It's very important to build that network and interact with one another, as I shared. Um, Joshua, um, thank you so much for sharing that the future generations should not lose out on what the planet has to offer. I completely agree. Samantha, yes, absolutely. Consulting businesses is extremely very important. Um, and in order to get that, create as much content as you can, because that is a stepping stone on its own. Um, with regard to Sakshi, yes, it's not an achievement. You want to make sure it's a daily norm. Absolutely. Um, and I don't think it's uh, it's unachievable. You know, go ahead. And Sara, thank you so much for sharing a little bit on how you're now uh, speaking about this with your um, you know professors. Very, very grateful. Um, and Omer, thank you so much for speaking about the sustainability introduction course that you've taken. Um, for those of you who are not studying it, it in school, uh, like for example, I only had one course and that was already after I had started the SDGs journey, um, that's absolutely fine. I personally learned everything on practical job and the experience that I had and the conferences that I attended um, and interacting and networking like I shared. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there is opportunities for you, especially during COVID-19, to focus on a self-directed learning approach there are so many courses available today, uh, and some of them are actually free. So get a certificate, you know, and try to equip yourself with the necessary skills moving forward. Moving on to this fourth agenda, a little bit on implementation and monitoring the SDGs for future leaders. 
Um, so what reporting methods have you heard of with regard to sustainability? There is no point working on sustainability if there are no uh, impact that you are creating, if there is no numbers, because at the end of the day, we do live in a numbers world. So you can't just say, I've committed to SDG3. Where's the statistics to support it? Where's the reporting? Um, so if anybody could just share, what are some of the reporting methods that you have heard of? I'm just going to maximize my screen. Um, absolutely. GRI. Thank you so much, Zara. Absolutely. And, and do you know how to implement this GRI report? Um, how have you learned it? Did you learn it on the job? Did you learn it in school or university? Um, if you could shed some insight on that, please. Okay, so I think there's only one person who answered a little bit about GRI. So I presume that a lot of us don't know what reporting methods there are available. Uh, just to keep it simple, there is the ESG. So we have the environmental, social and governance policy. Uh, we also have a little bit on ethics, environment, social and governments, uh, governance or government, both. Um, and with regard to how the reporting is done, Zara, you answered that you're not entirely sure, but you've been reading about it. Okay, great. Um, I actually propose a different type of reporting called the theory of change, uh, because this really helps you think um, a little bit on some of the outcomes you're trying to achieve and the social impact that you're trying to make. So I'm just going to guide you, uh, guide you a little bit on it. So for example, we have an organization that wants to create a social impact at the end of creating employment opportunities and financial independence, let's say for women. Um, and this is the target and goal that they have set. So now if you work your way backwards, what are some of the SDGs that you think would map into these two? You would say, of course, you have to educate these women. You have to also give them this uh, gender equality. You have to provide decent work, otherwise they can't get financial independence. And you have to make sure that there's reduced inequalities. And this could be hiring uh, in your policy um, that you will hire 50% women and 50% men. Um, and so you have to constantly monitor and track that. You then share, uh, if you go back, how am I gonna achieve uh, these targets? So for example, you say that I'm gonna start off just very simply by mentoring and training these women. Um, and out of these women, I have already trained 20 women in 2019 and completed 400 hours worth of training. And this can then be documented onto your website. It can be documented onto your yearly reports, um, or it can be showcased uh, to other people that you speak with. Uh, but you actually show that you are contributing to social impact and outputs. There is really no point otherwise. So you have to work your way backwards um, to understand this. And this is why I personally prefer um, this method. Uh, if you do not agree with that, that's absolutely fine. But you know, individuals who don't even know, uh, a bit, for example, you enter a business, who don't even know uh, a little bit on social um, impact and they don't know how to quantify it, this gives you a framework and you can actually guide them through it. It's very, very simple. Um, Zara asked a question on what are my thoughts on ESG. Um, so thank you so much for, for that question. Um, I think nowadays businesses just create yearly reports, uh, either for compliance or for marketing, uh, and beyond that, nothing. So they write all these great things that, oh, uh, from an environmental standpoint, we've completely eliminated all plastic bottles, and we're now only giving glass. Um, and there's very limited numbers, perhaps, to it. Um, and I think it's this very, very detailed, long essay uh, and, and, you know, I just personally don't think it's as effective, but I think it is easy to split it up and it's easier to read because people can now understand what are you doing from a societal standpoint? How are you helping employment? Um, and people could understand what you're doing from an environmental standpoint. And, you know, what are the government or governance that is supporting you to achieve these goals uh, or your board? Um, but I, 
I don't know. I personally don't think it's as effective because people are not doing it well enough. So that's what I would answer. But if you, you know, have a different opinion, then, you know, please do share and I'm happy to discuss it with you. And finally, last but not least, preparing the youth for international development. So I'm sure everybody knows uh, this person's face. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll let you answer. And if you don't know this, this is disappointing. <laughs> uh, but, you know, how many of you, um, you know, know this fantastic leader? Yes, Akshi, thank you so much. Absolutely, our favorite Greta. Um, absolutely. Um, and so when I speak about Greta, um, even though she's an activist uh, and perhaps, you know, very young, I think she's fantastic and a very, very inspirational leader because she's really showcased to the UN, to the government and, you know, to private sector that a youth has a very important role uh, in international development moving forward. Uh, what I think is very important, you know, moving forward with 2030, I personally don't think we're going to achieve the SDGs as, as a first step because we're in 2020 and to be honest, the pandemic has moved us quite behind. Um, and I don't think there's any right or wrong answer about how youth can achieve international development moving forward, uh, but this is what I think. I think we should have one youth present in each board um, and in each organization. And today we're still considered as interns or individuals with very limited experience. I think we need to showcase to the private sector that we bring some fresh, innovative ideas and we are resilient leaders at the end of the day. Uh, we may not have all the experience in the world, but we have lived in some very, very strong eras, all the way from digital technology, which we can really capitalize on. We have some great public speaking and networking skills. Uh, we're very fresh and always willing to learn. And finally, we, we make sure that we focus on contributing to organizational goals. Um, so I think that if we showcase ourselves as leaders, it is very important. But again, we need businesses to be listening to us. Um, with regard to government, I think it's very important that they bring in some mandatory compliances. So I know that they're in discussions with having compulsory, um, you know, sustainability targets that need to be set. Um, but, you know, again, we have to make sure that there are actual audits that are being done uh, and by external perhaps, but we should not charge so much money for an audit um, because, you know, it's very, very important um, that we discuss how we're achieving sustainability, what are the measures we're taking, what are the changes that we've done in the last couple of years, and constantly improve ourselves. Uh, from an education standpoint, schools, like I said in the, in the previous slides, have not prepared us to enter the workforce. Um, and if anything, this pandemic is showing that we're perhaps not as capable moving forward. And so we really need to make sure that we acquire the relevant skills, um, at least through self-directed learning online on courses, so that we can be at a competitive advantage. So that's very important. Um, as youth, as I said, we are competing with individuals with 10 years of experience. So we have to be equally as capable um, and it's not possible unless we focus on driving ourselves. And I think sustainability is something that not every generation understands, but we as the youth really understand the importance of it. So capitalize on that because there is going to be more jobs in sustainability as well. Uh, from a financial aspect, I think somebody in the beginning mentioned that finance is very important uh, to accelerate the SDGs. I completely agree. Um, I think investors now need to focus on evaluating businesses from a social, environmental and economical perspective and not just what is the ROI that you're bringing into the company, but what is the SROI, the social return on investment that you're bringing? What is the goodwill? I mean, why is Body Shop so successful? Because they really focused on animal cruelty, they focused on eco-friendly products, um, and they kept putting in that messaging that's, that it is an ethical brand. Um, and if, so that is very, very important moving forward and it's only going to amplify. I also hope that some of the youth get into this financial space um, to understand the overall outlook of this. Um, I would like to give one example about greenwashing. Um, so I saw a, a, a post that was made by KitKat um, a couple of days ago, and I was very disappointed, to be honest. So now they're getting rid of plastic packaging and moving on to paper packaging. Uh, we shifted from paper to plastic for a certain reason, um, you know, 
and, and so I think we're actually going back in the SDGs. Um, Omer said, what does greenwashing mean? Thank you so much for, for that question. Greenwashing means when you are saying that you are a sustainable business and contributing to sustainability targets, but actually you're just using it to benefit your marketing. Um, so you're saying you're contributing to environmental um, aspects by getting rid of plastic packaging, but at the same time you're saying that you are now moving to paper packaging. Um, so there's this mixed messaging that's coming out of it. I hope that gives you a better understanding. Uh, we have to be aware of our own actions and recognize that there are companies um, that are not contributing to sustainability holistically, and we need to point this out to them. So please engage in these conversations, comment, um, share this as well uh, with individuals, and make sure that you are understanding this as circular economy. Um, 10 years from now is very, very long time away. I don't really know uh, if you know we're going to be able to achieve sustainability um, overall, but I think if we showcase ourselves as international leaders, it is possible. But please convey the SDGs to other youth, share this knowledge. A lot of people don't even know what the SDGs are, and it's been four years since they've launched. Um, so I think this gives me uh, gives you guys an overall um, you know, understanding. I think Sakshi, you had a couple of questions, so I'm just going to answer those because I'm pretty much done with my presentation. Um, and, you know, please feel free to contact me and, and connect with me. I'm, I'm always happy to do so. Um, do you think personality plays a role in being an advocate or active impact creator for the SDGs? And how can introverts uh, who lack public speaking skills become more impactful? Um, to be honest, I'm very scared, even though I'm still on this call. I'm always very nervous before any presentation. It may seem that I'm very confident and excited, but I promise you that's not the case. Um, I think personality does play a role, but I think personality plays a role when you are ambitious, uh, when you're willing to make an impact, and when you want to make a change. Um, that's where personality plays a role, just because you lack perhaps the public speaking skills um, or confidence, that doesn't mean that you are inferior in any way. You just keep practicing. Um, and I think what really helped me uh, with practicing was, um, you know, speaking in front of a mirror, planning down some of the points that I was going to share, uh, writing it down so I don't forget anything. Um, I also did drama and theater in school, and that really helped me, um, you know, convey myself and make sure the pitches and the tones are a little bit better. So I think it is it is a very easy uh, thing to focus on speaking or lacking confidence. You can even attend some workshops um, like Toastmasters um, or even go online and watch how people are presenting. A lot of what I have learned is from other leaders. So, you know, just it's something that can be changed. It's not irreversible. If you have the drive, it can be changed because you have a passion. And that's the question that I asked in the beginning. What is your passion and purpose? If your passion is to make a difference, nothing should stop you. And I hope that answers your question. Um, I think uh, I think Zara had another question. Can you elaborate on why you think the move from plastic to paper was a step backwards? Um, absolutely. Uh, so is cutting trees, uh, which is what we said we were not going to do, is that something that we want to do again, where we are making sure that, you know, I mean, cutting trees is sort of like making sure that there's limited carbon emissions in the world as well. We're creating a healthier oxygen environment for ourselves. Um, and actually, plastic is something that can be recyclable and so can paper. But if paper is wet, we cannot recycle paper. Uh, but we can still recycle plastic because it is easy to, to wash off. Not all plastic can be recycled. But this is what I think. Uh, but, you know, you let me know if you agree with me or not. Uh, people say that packaging is not important at all and plastic is not a, not a good thing at all. But the question is, why is plastic ending up in the oceans? It's ending up in the oceans because we either are not recycling properly, we're littering. So ask yourself, are you actually going to the recycling bin out of your house to recycle anything? No, right? So it's questionable. Um, Leona, you asked a very good question. Where can we find like-minded individuals to network with? Um, I actually started my own networking platform and, you know, we do our own events. So you're always welcome to come over and connect. We actually put everyone on the screen so they can ask interactive questions. So you are happy to join us. Uh, but on a whole, uh, where can you actually find like-minded individuals? I would say LinkedIn. 
This is one tool, and if you haven't built a LinkedIn profile yet, please do so. Um, this was a changing point for me, uh, and it's very, very fast to connect with everybody, even if you search sustainability on the keyword bar. Um, you know, it is, it is one of the best tools available. Or creating content on Instagram and using the right hashtags, but I would say get a LinkedIn profile if you don't already. Um, and then Lakshmi asked, there was an article saying that some companies who are already taking original steps towards sustainability does not market it as the recent greenwashing has made consumers think that sustainable solutions are more costly. What are your thoughts on this? Um, I'm actually working in Coca Veda, as I shared, where we basically showcase um, sustainability to be affordable. So more or less all our products, even though they're all with sustainable ingredients and they're all handmade by women communities. So we give employment as well. They're only in the range of 50 to 60 dirhams or even less sometimes. And I think it's about companies showcasing that sustainability can be an affordable solution. Um, I think that's really dependent on your marketing tactic. Um, some individuals are willing to pay more on, on sustainability uh, focused brands. Um, but I think at the end of the day, it's entirely up to them fitting the mass markets. And now that sustainability is going to be booming and there's going to be competition, everyone needs to be more price sensitive to try to make it affordable so that everyone can use it and you get volumes. I hope that answers your question. Um, Zara said, how can we join your networking group? Um, Zara, please reach out to me on LinkedIn, uh, Instagram or email, no problem at all, whichever is convenient. Um, and when there is a next webinar, I will definitely keep you posted. So, you know, please feel free to connect. Um, Anud said, how should we deal with frustration regarding world leaders not taking enough actions? This is a big demotivator. Oof, well said. Um, I think there will always be people that frustrate you. I think there will always be world leaders, and, and I think you're thinking of the same person as me, um, who are not taking any action or saying that climate change and, and sustainability is, is not the way moving forward. I think, but there will always be individuals who are very, very passionate about it. Um, and eventually, uh, if you look at leaders who are saying that you know it's not a great opportunity, um, they will soon see that sustainability has an economic benefit. Um, and as soon as you connect sustainability with money and showcase this 12 trillion opportunity by 2030, they will automatically get it eventually. So don't worry about dealing with the frustration that they have. Focus on connecting with passionate, like-minded individuals because those who are not great world leaders will eventually you know, turn around and actually see sustainability as an opportunity. So just showcase yourself as being different. Uh, when I started in university and, and was advocating sustainability, um, a lot of my friends uh, felt that it was a bit much and sustainability is not as important because I was doing an undergraduate uh, a degree on hospitality. Um, and today everyone is saying sustainability is so important just because of one pandemic. Um, and so, you know, please uh, don't, don't be afraid to stand out and be different. That's what makes you unique. And this is what the youth should do. We should not all be the same. Um, Omer, you shared, what are your thoughts on fair trade? Um, very good question. Um, so actually, we chose in our company not to do fair trade uh, because acquiring certifications to begin with is a hefty, hefty amount. Uh, and actually, certification companies are making money out of you know, businesses wanting to be environmentally friendly or showcase that they are environmentally friendly. Uh, I personally don't think fair trade is a, a suitable solution. And I'll tell you why. Uh, if you look at the cacao industry, uh, how many farmers are still very poor? They're still, still very, very poor. But yet the fair trade companies who share that they're fair trade uh, you know, certified are making so much money. So why is it that companies that are trying to do good are not helping the cocoa farmers at the bottom? Um, I think this is something to think about. So I personally don't think fair trade is effective. I think if you actually showcase with the limited certifications you can acquire um, that you know, moving forward, you are contributing to employment. And this is the amount of farmers you're committing to, uh, uplifting their livelihoods, for example, from $2 to $5. This is the women you've employed. Um, these are the communities you're working with. That is more effective. Is fair trade as transparent? I don't think so. 
But then again, if we look at blockchain as a very important um, tool, and there are a lot of companies that are now using it, are actually tracking the process all the way from the farm till the consumer um, and trying to see at each pillar uh, how much money is coming back into the farmer cooperatives uh, or the farmers on a whole. I think that's interesting. But there should be transparency, which is not the case at the moment. Um, Hari asked, is LinkedIn very important? Yes, absolutely. LinkedIn is, is a very, very important tool. And if you haven't got a profile yet, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is. Um, it is far more effective for me, at least, uh, you know, for from Instagram or Facebook, which I don't even use. Um, so please get on a LinkedIn a profile and see how you can connect with people so, so quickly. I think in the first year, I got up to 500 uh, connections and connect with like-minded people. Don't just connect with everyone and accept everybody. Be selective. Um, how can sustainability be instilled uh, in the minds of those below poverty line and struggling to just survive their basic needs? Because sustainability is considered as a luxury. Um, absolutely. Um, and as I shared with you uh, previously, I think it's very important for brands to now also create ranges that are affordable, that everybody can purchase for the mass market. Uh, but how can it be instilled in the minds of those below poverty? I think this is something that we're doing as an organization. We share with everyone all the way from the farmers to the consumers that sustainability is very important and it needs to be embedded. Um, and so we actually explain, go through a presentation, give them that financial and educational literacy so they understand why we're doing what we're doing. And we also share with them, we're trying to change their lives. So I think once somebody understands it, um, then it's fine. But it's difficult if somebody is, is below poverty to purchase a product that is very expensive. And I think that's up to the companies even who do great CSR work, for example, who give some of their products, uh, giving back to the farmers or the individuals who are below poverty as a CSR initiative to share that this is what we're doing and thank you for being a part of it. Um, so I hope that answers your question, but it's a tough question. It, it really depends on personality and individuals' choices. Um, how do you feel about the zero waste movement? Is it a sustainable lifestyle? Um, Samantha, I don't think there's uh, any right or wrong in this. I think zero waste is, is very, very uh, important as well. I think it's great that individuals are committing towards it. Um, but I think at the same time, I don't think there's anything wrong as well with using packaging. Um, so for example, you know, just, just as an example, uh, we do some of our packaging in plastic, but never have we said that plastic can't be recycled or it can't be cleared out. We've never said you can't put plants inside your plastic or you can't refill the bottles uh, with other ingredients. Uh, since we're doing e-commerce mainly, we have to put in some sort of packaging. Um, as the pandemic has shown us, sanitation and hygiene is extremely important. So I think it depends on everyone's business model and depends on what everyone is thinking. But I don't think there's anything wrong with either or. Um, I hope that answers your question. Do you believe that the movement encourages inequalities? Uh, sorry, I, I don't understand your question. If you could just please rephrase that. Thank you. Um, so if the SDG goals can't all take place in 2030, will they be achieved by 2040 or 2050? Joshua, thank you so much for your question. I personally can't predict when the goals are going to be achieved, but if you look at no poverty around the world by 2030, 2040, uh, I, don't, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with setting targets that are ambitious. But I think at the end of the day, it has to be led on to your own government to decide what kind of targets do you want to set. So, for example, um, the SDGs gives you an overall framework on how to achieve each of them. Um, and you have all these fantastic goals. Uh, but after that, it's up to the government and their own policies to actually set up how um, you're going to showcase this to the, to the private sector and to the youth. Uh, we are not getting any information on perhaps government actually initiating these policies that we want to commit to perhaps uh, 10,000 jobs in the next one year, uh, and we're going to do this by X, Y, Z. Um, so I think it's now up to the government in a nutshell to answer you when they can achieve these targets by, because they know the country better than anyone. If the UN sets an overall goal, for example, for Afri Africa to achieve these goals, it is tough. It is very, very tough. Um, and I, I don't I don't know how to answer your question because it really depends on their own government and, and what the government is doing for the people. It's a very tough question. 
Um, would you recommend to choose one goal that is important to us and focus on it or try to do small changes to all the goals? Zara, thank you so much for your question. Um, and I actually have a very different perspective from a lot of people. So a lot of people say that you should only focus on one goal of the SDGs. Um, I completely disagree. I think that you should focus on a couple of the goals because each of the goals are interlinked. So for example, if you give economic, if you give quality education and you give decent work and economic growth, you can make a difference in society today and actually reduce inequalities. So I'm talking about SDG 4, SDG 8 and SDG 10. And if you combine it with partnerships and the private sector, then that's already all the goals more or less being interlinked. So I think it depends on how you frame yourselves, but you don't have to just focus on one goal that, oh, I am a uh, you know zero waste advocate and I'm only going to focus on zero plastic in the oceans today. That's fine, but what else are you doing? Um, you know, and, and try to focus as well on the people goals. I think this is lacking in the world today. A lot of us are just focusing on the environment, but the goals of the SDGs are in order of priority. SDG 1, no poverty is the first priority. So try to see how you can achieve SDG 1 with the rest of the goals. Good health and well-being has become a very important priority because of the COVID-19 as well. So try to link them together. Do face rejected at the beginning? I'm um, sorry, I don't understand the question, Sarah. If you could please just rephrase that. Thank you. Oh, do you face rejection at the beginning? Um, yes. Oh my God. Yes. I, I have faced a lot of, uh, a lot of rejection, uh, when I started my sustainability journey. Um, and to be honest, a lot of, a lot of people weren't interested in speaking to me because I was young and I was often thought as somebody who didn't have an opinion or a perspective. Um, and I, I, I was a bit upset and I'm not going to lie to you, but I think you just need to keep telling yourself that's fine. Somebody has given me feedback. Maybe they're not impressed with my work. I will constantly improve and make sure that I get more knowledge and showcase to them that I'm able to be a leader and I will not be rejected moving forward. Rejection, I think, happens to everyone. I think it's just how you take it moving forward. I hope that answers your question. Um, I think more or less this is um, all the questions. Uh, I hope I hope everybody's got the answers. Um, so I would like to thank all of you for attending this webinar. Um, I think I have crossed my time limit. <laughs> uh, but you know, thank you so much for everybody who has joined and for all the great work that all of you are doing. Uh, don't be afraid to make change. Don't be afraid to connect with me and and discuss. Uh, and just make sure that you know you're contributing. Uh, towards the SDGs with their head held high um, and be passionate, just keep being passionate. Thank you so much to all of the people who have said they enjoyed my session and for all the amazing questions. Um, I'm so grateful. Uh, this was so interactive um, and I really, really enjoyed it. And I hope in the future we can see one another um, as opposed to me just seeing myself. So thank you so much, guys, and, and wishing you all the very best.